Welcome to Carter's Retro Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing Magic Drop 2, or as I like to call it, Magic Drop 2 Electric Boogaloo. Anyway, <laughs> we've got, um, we, I, I did a review on the original for this, like back in 2013, and yes, it has taken me this long to finally do the sequel. So, is it better literally in every possible way? <laughs> so, more details inside, I guess. Here we go. There's one thing that's become quite obvious to me after doing some research for this game, and that is, the Sega Saturn version of Magical Drop 2 doesn't have much online about it, but Magical Drop the series seems to have quite a hardcore and dedicated following. I guess when you have five sequels that included a mobile version of the game, it would signify some kind of popularity. To call it a Tetris clone would be doing the series a grave injustice according to the forums I've been reading. It'd be more along the lines of Buster Move in my eyes anyway, but even then, there's enough of a challenge for this series to be its own thing. Magical Drop 2 was released in the arcades, Super Famicom, Neo Geo, Neo Geo CD, Neo Geo Pocket Color, and the Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn version was released in 1996, developed by Data East and published by Sega. It is of course the sequel to Magical Drop, but just a small amendment to my previous review I did back in 2013 on the original game. And that is, the original didn't see any sort of release on the Neo Geo. Only two sequels did. So, has much changed? From what I can see, four new characters. Justice, Strength, Empress, and Black Piero. The presentation is pretty damn good from start to finish. These sorts of puzzle games typically do have a light arcadey feel, and this is absolutely no different. All of the elements such as colour choice and object placement around the screen are absolutely bang on. In-game is quite minimal, but no major departure from the original. That is to say that it looks great without any kind of vast overhaul. Graphics just look a little bit better and a little more detailed when compared to the original. It's a puzzle game based around speed, so animation needs to be smooth, and being on the 2D powerhouse the Saturn is, means a game like this fits like a finger in a bum. Colour seems to be a bit better, or a bit brighter than the original, even if that's not really the case. There's no glitching and everything seemed to be pretty bang on. Knowing there was a third game on the Saturn at this point, and knowing full well that the next game to be reviewed is the sequel, where can they go from here graphically? I couldn't really fault the graphics in really any aspect. Kudos. Sound is pretty hard to describe, because when it's either good or bad, there's plenty of ways to describe that and you can justify it any way you like. However, the soundtrack in this game while being above average, seems to be slight and kind of forgettable. Especially when the opinion of the internet seems to contradict that somewhat. It's perfectly fine within the context of the game, but at no point did I go, Damn, how good is this music? Because the answer to that question is never. The sound effects of the characters were more powerful than the music itself, and they were good. The sound of the balls clacking together and the disappearing sound was very satisfying. In terms of controls, both the original and this game handle very well and are very responsive. The perfect complement to a game that requires speed at its core gameplay. The gameplay itself has only changed in the slightest. You're still making combinations as you would, but now special drops can be matched with normal drops, unlike the first game where they had to be matched separately. This makes for a more streamlined and ergo a better experience. You still have your gems, which, if you match regular coloured balls next to, turn into that colour as well for extra points. You still have your gems, which, if you match regular coloured balls next to, turn into that colour as well for extra points. There are three modes, survival mode, a versus against computer, and two player. All which will give you plenty to play through. Although, I'll be honest, it did take me a bit to work that out as the menus are all in Japanese. Would I recommend this game? Knowing full well what the prequel and sequel are like, I can still recommend this one on its own. If you're a fan of puzzle games, it's certainly a strong entry and worth having by having enough content and very respectable core gameplay. Is that it? <laughs> 